Good morning. I'd like to call the order of the regular workshop. I'm sorry, the board workshop meeting for March 5th, 2024, here in Mark's Hall at 9.30. Uh, Lewis, would you give us the uh, invocation of Pledge of Allegiance, and please stand if you can. Oh. Heavenly Father, we're truly grateful for this time together in your presence. We ask that you be with us as we consider each other's and our residents' opinions and try and make the best decisions we can for our community and its residents. Things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, could we have the roll call, please? Sure, Lori Dalton here, Dottie Deerwester. Present on Zoom. Okay, Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Present. Russell McAllister. Present. Louis Nichols. Present. Cindy O'Brien. Present on Zoom. Rod Smith. Present. Dwayne Trotter. Present in the hall. Lee Morris. Present. Okay, I'd like to jump into the public comments, and that's limited to three minutes for the workshop workshop items only, please. And I am thrilled to see so many people in the audience. Unless you're going to chew me out. Do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? Hearing none, I'm going to close public comment. We'll go into the uh, standing report from our treasure barn. I'm sure 6608 Dakota Street. Oh, Mike's not on. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay, by me, you know. We want to hear you, Barry. You heard me that, though? Okay. So our current balance is $37,536.42. And that reflects the 6597.50 for the stage curtains. And since we've been here last, it, we've taken in $39.22. Um, in the last two um, days that we were open, we made $1,000 days. So we're pretty proud of that. That was a good one. And I'm excited because we're getting our floors cleaned in the in the kitchen. kitchen. And um, it, they've never been done that in the time I've been there. And I also went to another place and picked up a whole load of... Um, left over from their garage sale. So we have a whole new bunch of garage sale stuff that's new to you guys. So you should all come. Mm -hmm. And that's all I got. And I truly appreciate what the treasure barn has done uh, for the large hall, the curtains, uh, future projects that we've got already uh, in plan. But uh, without their support, we would be in a lot of trouble. Okay. Uh, let's jump into the clubs and organizations. Well, do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make uh, clubs and organization comments? Hearing none, I'm going to close uh, the clubs and organizations. We'll go right into the workshop items. Uh, the first item we have up is the PP18. Yes, sir. May I add a workshop agenda item, please? Sure. Um, Treasure Barn Operation Update. Not yet. I will. When, when I'm sorry. Treasure Barn. Operation Update. Thank you. I just kind of made it. I'm not sure what to call it, so I'm just going to call it that. Well, at least passing out is what I'm going to be saying today, so. Thank you. Okay, we'll add that as item five. Thank you. Okay, the first item we have is the uh, PP18 public records policy, and that's myself. Um, the update uh, to this policy was generated by our district council uh, for our use, and this policy was last updated uh, November of 16. And I just want to kick a few things around on this. Um, 
it pretty much covers everything that we had in our uh, existing policy. Uh, but I do want to go back to the procedures uh, portion of it, which is on page two of four. Procedure, yep. And under there it says, uh, under Florida law, a request can be made verbally and by telephone. Uh, I have asked our district council that I could remove that uh, because I specifically don't want a verbal. So in case we don't get the full intent of what the person is requesting, uh, that they could come back and say, well, you didn't provide it. So uh, I have authorization to remove verbally and by telephone. And it still says, or in writing or by email. So it's pretty well covered. Can be made in person or in writing by email or letter via, okay. Yeah. All right, hang on just a second. Let me find that on the, on the re. You're the re just, just verbally? Removing the word verbally and then removing the words. Well, it's just gonna read a request can be made by telephone or in writing. I'm sorry, in person or in writing by email letter. Shouldn't they all be in writing? In my opinion, it should be in writing. That's that way we have that, a record. That's what it says, or in writing. That's the intent. No, just no, in writing. But in person doesn't necessarily, Correct. in person or in telephone doesn't mean in writing. Right. That's what I'm saying. If you call in telephone, that's a verbal, in my opinion. Yeah. Same thing as in no, I'm taking out by telephone. But if, if I'm taking I'm, out verbally and by telephone. Take those two words out. Okay. I, okay. I, could so walk, I could walk up to the window and I could say, can I, I need a copy of mm -hmm. the minutes from last meeting and she can hand them to me and it's a verbal request She and it's all done and it's out of there. And so I can do it in person because I'm able to say, no, that's not what I wanted. I needed this. No, no. I, See, I, mm -mm. If, if, I go, if, if I, if I go to the offices, I say, oh, I want a record of the homeowners in here. Right. You know, I mean, that's a that's a verbal, you know, and they, they can put that in writing. We're just not going to accept any verbal, so they can write it on a napkin. I don't care, but um, it it can be. But you can take all these. Are so we taking out in person as yeah. well? Yeah. No, but no, I think that um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Please, in person can be done. It's just there there will have to be when a person comes up to the window or to the desk. They will have to write out their yeah, request. Yeah, that's that's, that's, right. that's that's all we're saying yes. because we need to be able to say if if as as uh, Trustee Lombardi said, if they want the records from emails or whatever, then we have to make sure that we uh, can. If there's a cost, if there's research that has to be done, and that we're matching what the person has requested. We're not wasting time. There could be an issue where the person's if it was just done verbally, the person says that's not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is why we like it in writing, whether it's in person uh, or by email. It just needs to be in, in, writing. Writing. in writing of what they would like. But the way it's the old, well, if you if you left it as can can be made in person, in writing by email or letter, mm -hmm. then it's then it's fine. So you're going to remove Take out verbally the by telephone or right. yeah, I'll, I'll come with by writing. All right. See my new tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get you a warning when they can start going my way. And then uh, we had quite a discussion on the uh, contact information or by anonymous. Um, our district council is researching just to, uh, to check on the uh, anonymous. I don't like anonymous, but I have found. No Florida statute that says you can do that by anonymous other than the Public Service Commission. And they do have a uh, anonymous statement, but just below that, it says name, telephone number, and email. That will, what the hell is that? But, so I'm going to leave that in uh, for the time being. And if I have to, I'll come back and maybe we can change that at a later date. But the rest of it, I think, pretty well covers all of uh, mm -hmm. PP18 as what we already have written. Uh, it just defines a whole lot more of uh, the mm -hmm. procedures and what uh, a specific record is. And it eliminates a lot of the duplications of what we already have in PP18, uh, especially under the access where 
uh, if the record custodian determines that other uh, coast will require extensive clerk. I think that's mentioned four or five times. I'd like to just get rid of that and delete uh, the existing PP18. I, I Any discussion? You. Oh, yes. No, you had it. <laughs> you, you weren't expecting any less, were you? No, no. All right, good. <clears throat> First off, um, I have some issue with the fact that custodian is used eight times and clerk is used 10 times, and I believe that they refer to the same person. Can we change all the references to custodian? If you want to, well, uh, um, no, I don't. I don't think that's in the because no, one one is a both. district, right? One is at a different level, uh, pay rate wise. So the office manager would be at a different pay rate than Kristen, for example. Okay. Or if I'm uh, doing, I understand that the research. I'm um, not necessarily the custodian. But I am, mm -hmm. but I am in this case a clerk, research clerk. I, I guess I didn't follow. So, um, like procedure, it it says the best way for an individual to request a record is to contact the district's clerk. Wouldn't they contact the district's custodian and then be it would be assigned to a clerk? Um, if we're going to flip flop back and forth, then in the definitions. Since we define a custodian, you want to define a clerk too, so they so everybody knows the difference. No, because I, I think that you're you're narrowing the uh, when it can be, you know, if, what what if in ten years we're we're having five office staff mm -hmm. for whatever reason. It's but I, I and I know we can change the policy, but I, I think that in this case that a lot of times the uh, the Request can come in to, uh, to the office manager, wh who is actually the custodian. Mm -hmm. uh, they can come in through you, the secretary. They shouldn't. They, but, but they, but but they, they can can't. come in to anybody, is yeah. what I'm trying to make yeah, sure. And then they'd be given, they're given they would to, be given to the custodian. Mm -hmm. And right. then she would then, and, and which happens a lot, she would then say to, generally she runs them by uh, the chair uh, or myself. And then we try to figure out who's the best person to handle it. Okay. All right. I can move with that. Um, then let's see. My next problem is on page three of four, the duplication and certification. Mm -hmm. um, on the next PP, we're getting ready to talk about the cost is 25 cents per single sheet and 50 cents for a double sided. Shouldn't these be the same cost? No. Uh, They're different for public records? One, one is public records, and that is by a Florida statute that says you can only charge 15 cents per mm -hmm. hmm. okay. article. But with the next one coming up for the office fees is right. the cost of paper and everything mm -hmm. that we're doing in there has dramatically increased as well as our salaries. Um, that's what I want to increase. So that's two, okay. two separate issues. Okay. Um, and then on that, on that same page, um, down below the first set of bullets, it starts with a fee may the second line down should require be require required or requires uh, more than 15 minutes of resources. I think you're right. It should probably yeah, it should be an S. Requires. Okay. Oh, hang on. My bad. I couldn't make up my mind. I beat it up so many times I dropped it. Um, the next bullet down, the next to the last line, all the way over to right. the right, um, it says estimate an average of two minutes per. It says and. The D should be gone. It should be an. Correct. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm not changing the spirit. I'm um, sorry, where are you at? I'm not seeing that either. It's, it's, it's last, right, it's last right sentence, second uh, bullet point. In email email searches estimate oh, there you go. an average. average. So we're changing to the estimated? Or no, it's just no, it's taking an. the D out of it. The it an. shouldn't be the an, and it should be an. Oh, an. An average of. <laughs> um, then on the next page, page Four or four. Um, under no, at the very bottom, no record exists. The first line, all the way over to the right. Um, uh, clerk. So the clerk K 
can notify the requester. I think we need to add the word can. Went right after clerk, second clerk. The I'm sorry. So the clerk can notify? Yes. Okay. Okay. At least that's my recommendation. <clears throat> And then the other question that I have is on the former PP18, mm -hmm. if you go through those and you find page three or four, it's a district office request form. Are we getting rid of that form or are we sticking that on the back of the new 18? Uh, no, I want to get rid of it because it's an optional form. And I would prefer that the uh, okay. person requesting that uh records request it's actually submitted in writing okay. so they specified I, I don't want to extend all the labor of filling out the form because this form is optional okay no worries that, that, that those were the things i had you let me off easy oh. okay any other discussion None, carry none. I'll close that one. We'll jump on into the next one, which is update the uh, PP19, the office fees. And PP19 was last updated in 2020. Uh, the prices of paper and labor, labor have increased. Uh, we also have to do, uh, or I'm sorry, we also don't have audio cassettes, the CDs and DVDs. I don't even have anything that can play them. Um, so I'd like to get rid of that. Uh, I don't have any equipment to do it. And I also want to change the PP to read uh, just the office fees and delete the public records right. portion of that. And it's just going to be APP for office fees. And so the only office fees are going to be copies and faxes. The deposits and additional fee information that's currently on PP19 goes away? Correct. Okay. Because those salaries are all going to be adjustable. Right. They're depending actually on, contained. Depending on who is doing the research and everything correct. else. And they're contained in the. Uh, in, eight, in 18. Yeah, correct. 18, correct. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, I saw somebody asking about getting a document scanned and put on uh, email to them. Are we doing that in the office or not? I'm going to have to refer. I don't know. Yes, we can do that. We discharge it as an email. Discharge it. Yeah, it's all one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I. Uh, okay. And what I also want to point on in here is the uh, fees for uh, faxes uh, for the United States is a dollar. And then I think we used to have other states. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're all a dollar regardless of what state we send them to. So there was no need for that. And then Canada, of course, is so uh, expensive. So we have to charge them for that. That was the only changes we had there. So, Dwayne, I guess that nobody ever wants it mailed to them. I'm sorry? Uh, I guess nobody ever wants it mailed to them then. I don't see any fees for when you mail them out. They just pick them up or fax or email. I don't think we've had any mail. Okay. That's Maybe. just getting expensive too. I just didn't know if you want to cover that. I, I was going to say, the only thing I know, or I think I know that gets mailed regularly is somebody that goes north for the summer has mm -hmm. the Tribunes mailed, but he provides the office with prepaid, you know, postage paid envelopes that are pre-addressed and they just slide the Tribune in and throw it in the mail. We, we don't have any fees involved in that. It'd be cheaper to look on the website. I get that. Yeah. So if, if somebody is up north and they wanted a public records request and they said, mail it to me, how would we deal with that? Would, would we? It becomes part of the uh, cost. cost. That's what yeah. they would just yeah. charge them the actual mail. Right. This is Dottie, I have a question. Sure. Okay, so for the email documents, the documents would be attached um, as a PDF typically. Is the dollar per page uh, charged on how many pages the attachment is? If the PDF is five 
five pages. pages. It's charged with five pages or it's charged with one because it's one file. So we, that we have to scan them per page. Per page. And we're charged per page for speed. Yeah. So they should read per page. It it, it actually does. It read. does. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, it does. It says first page and then additional page. I just wanted to clarify that the PDFs are counted because there are a number of pages in the PDF. That's how they count that. Is that correct? Correct. I have a question on the uh, PP19 form, page one or two up there at the top where you list the cost of the different items. Mm -hmm. And we've stated in there that we will not accept a USB or a, a thumb drive from anybody because of the potential hazard it could do. Mm -hmm. Are we going to provide them with a thumb drive if they want it that way? For a cost, yeah. Yeah, for a cost. So we need to put that cost in there. On the top of that the page PP19. I, I believe that that would be if the person wrote us out a request that says, I'd like these records and I'd like you to put it on a thumb drive. Then as we're figuring how much time it takes to do the research and to pull all the data out, then we would add the cost of the of the thumb drive. The, the actual at the at the time cost. Thanks. We're, we're, we're required to provide a complete cost, cost to retrieve that information as requested. Anything else? This is Dottie again. So yep. for the thumb drive, would that be added to page one where it says copies and faxes? Would that be added? Because there's a whole bunch of thumb drives that the park purchased a while back that perhaps could be used and charged for those. So would that be added to that list? This, uh, go ahead. Isn't, aren't we getting confused between public uh, record yes, requests? The and this is yeah. going to the office and getting a copy or getting a fax. Yeah, this is not the same. And if they want a thumb drive, it wouldn't be so what, what if, you're talking about. If I may, uh, Trustee Dear Wester, I think we're getting confused between the public records request that could be put onto a thumb drive, in yeah. which case the cost of that would be included in the public records request. And on PP19, there probably wouldn't be any reason for a, a thumb drive because it's faxing and copying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it includes email. So would that, oh, no, that would be the same thing. Never mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's go on to the next one. Okay. Uh, since we have the uh, new website up, we have nine of those red books in our possession inside the office. Every time that the Board of Trustees meets, and makes a change to any one of the charter, the deed restrictions, or the uh, rules and regs, the staff have to make copies and distribute all of those nine books, which to me is just a uh, waste of paper and a waste of labor. Uh, since the Red Book is on the website and is updated regularly, I don't see the need of continuing to have <laughs> nine of those Red Books in there. So go ahead and hit me. So you're just going to do three. Qu no, question. Lori three. updates the web page, correct? And she would update it with it's between Lori and Lee? Correct. So it's going to be timely, like when Lori's up north for the summer, mm -hmm. Lee would be taking care of updating. I do it, I do it from up north. Do you? Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have an issue with connections or anything? or You're, you're very timely because you're the keeper of all the records anyways. <laughs> Uh, when I left Michigan, I had a dedicated um, internet line. Now, will it still be functioning <laughs> when I get back? It remains to be seen. Every time we've gone up there, my phone has done something different, so I can't rely on my phone to do even what it did the year before. Um, so I don't know. This is the first year that I've, I've had that, and we'll see how that works. But my fingers are crossed 
it's a it's a cabled line. It's not uh, through the airways. It's, it's, it's an actual yeah. wire. So I'm assuming, right in word, <laughs> that everything will work the way that it did, and I'll have access to be able to do the updating. And of course, anything that you would update on the on the web would have a update date. Because mm -hmm. at the bottom of like the PPs and all that, there's a revised date. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yep. that would show on there. That, so if we were out looking online, that will we not would change. be looking. If we knew something had changed, we could identify that that change was correct. Yep. Is there a requirement to keep a physical copy? Like if we need it in the work in the board, and we're not supposed to have an outside connection electronically. Do we still have one hard copy to refer to? Sure. The so. secretary, as well as the um, mm -hmm. office manager, has to keep that. Right. Mm. That's in the public records. I'm assuming Lee's going to probably keep his too. I'm not. Oh, you're not. No, cool. no. no. All right. We've had well, then there, there'll be two. One will be here in the in the meeting. I bring it every okay. meeting. Now, when I'm not here in the summer, it's in my office. Um, you know, but it's not being updated. Well, until you bet. <clears throat> no. What we'll do is when you're not here, we'll make sure we have the ability to search electronically at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Can we use electronics at the meeting? No, well, it'll it'll have to no. be. It, it, well, we're going to have to make an exception that we should be able to at least search the. Uh, well, if for the DJ's meeting, got a copy of the red book, it? why can't we bring that to the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I would think you could search as long as it's within our own network. No, no, no it, there, there's it there actually are says other issues. We actually have a policy that says you can't have you and, can't and, use your phone in the meeting. And the, and the, the no, same no, no, thing. That's no, not, not that's not just the board of trustees here. That's also the county uh, mm -hmm. in the state. They can't have electronic use. The only thing you can do is like if you have a presentation, oh, like yeah, that, what we did the budget, yeah. that kind of stuff. But yeah. As far as any outside communication, yeah. per se, you can't have that. Correct. I guess what I was talking about is not using a phone, but bringing one of the laptops, one of the trustee laptops, in. And being able to reference our website from there, I don't. I don't really see that as being any kind it's of. Not, a, yeah, it's it's, it's not. It's our own. It's on our own server. And I know oh. the county commissioners all use iPads, so it's yeah. not. Well, we'll have to just we'll have to discuss this later. <laughs> <laughs> I no, we're going to agree to disagree. Worst worst case, we bring a red book in from TJ yeah, yeah, the, the the worst case is I could ask Kristen through the summer as I, if I have to make updates, okay. I'll ask Kristen to yeah. print, I'll email it to update her, one book. print it and update my book, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that would keep my book updated and then can come in here and, and, uh, you should have to keep the office manager's book updated also. Oh, yeah, deals. But she does. It's, it's only two books instead of 11 okay. now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, it'd be way easier. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I had two, uh, policies or two regs and uh, rule or rules and regs that I want to check. So I went to about six different books and I'll be damned if they weren't in there. Mm -hmm. I had an updated policy and nobody else did. Mm -hmm. it just irritated me. So that was the main drive on this thing. I will say with the new web page with the search feature, <laughs> it is really, really handy. This is Dottie. I have a question. Sure. So is the is the red book on the website now? Um, is it called the red book and where is it yeah. located? The red book contains all of the things under the governance portion on the web page, right, Lori? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. No, but, I know what the red book is. I'm asking if it's already on the website. Is it yes, still yes, called yes, the red book yes. and where is it located? It's not it, called it's the under red governance. Book. It's under it, governance. And it has okay. the charter, the rules and regs, policy, procedures, the whole bit. Mm -hmm. But is it is it okay? Is it the P? Is it the existing policy and procedures? It's not like there's a book there that called the Red Book like we have. No, there never has no, been. There, there never has been anything in the office that says Red Book. It's just that everybody has we a had, Red Book. Yeah, we had a Red Book. Okay, My, so mine is black. I don't know why, but oh. it's black. you gotta be different. So, That's because you're special. So, <laughs> but regardless of what color that book is. <laughs> On the on the website under the governance, it pulls up everything that is contained in your red book. Yeah. 
Okay, so that hasn't changed. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Where am I going with this? Next page. Think, so we, next we, so, we support it. So everybody supports this so I yes. can just go ahead and yeah. eliminate that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This one here, I'm going to cheat on. Uh, the next one is the uh, deed restrictions and update uh, changes or process to the uh, deed restrictions. Uh, I don't want to confuse everybody, so I sat down and I actually made a cheat sheet. So I'm just going to go ahead and start reading this because it does get complicated on exactly what we're trying to do with the uh, uh, changing the deed restrictions. So anyway, the... Uh, under the deed restrictions, there are several, several old deed restrictions that require changing. Uh, the current method to change and update the deed restrictions is not efficient. It should align with the charter. Um, first, under Section 15 of the charter, it details the scope uh, and the powers of what the Board of, uh, board of Trustees is authorized to do, specifically under Section 15.7. And I didn't include that in part of your packet, but it, it just um, states that the Board of Trustees can adopt and enforce the rules and regulations, including the deed restrictions. Uh, therefore, the powers of the charter need to be extended, including the deed restrictions. Uh, the Board of Trustees would also need to include the process of amending the deed restrictions. Currently, the deed restrictions themselves detail the process of how uh, how to amend them, uh, and that is included in the, the plan. <laughs> the current process requires a majority vote of all the property lot owners, as opposed to the majority vote of all qualified owners uh, who like to, I'm sorry, who vote like amending the charter. So there's the difference there. Uh, the first step to amend the charter is to accomplish, uh, I'm sorry, to accomplish this, the district uh, must hold a special referendum vote, which we've all done in the past. Um, Section 20 of that covers the processes, and I, it's in your pack, and I don't want to go through that whole process, but basically it's just two-thirds of the vote of the entire uh, board. Uh, what's the second part? I forgot. Um, but then... The referendum. Then, the, then you have to have it uh, uh, in within 30 days and not more than 60 days certify the resolution. And that has to go to the Board of Supervisors of, I'm sorry, the Supervisor mm -hmm. of the Elections. Uh, then a majority of the qualified electors of the district approve that resolution. So the, the homeowners are still mm -hmm. voting on that whole resolution, the same as what we've done in on, the other deep restrictions that we, I'm sorry, uh, charter changes that we've done. Um, the requirements to be considered a qualified elector is covered in section five and six of the charter. Mm -hmm. So once the process is passed, the district will need to amend the deed restrictions as the deed restrictions would then conflict with the charter. So with that, whatever the process of what we come up with, with the uh, special referendum to a vote to amend the deed restrictions uh, will need to be used to amend the deed restrictions. See what I'm saying? So process you have to follow. With the, the charter, then the deed restrictions, then you have to have that whole process in place. Um, then once that's passed, then the uh, deed restrictions would need to be with the Manatee County, um, I'm sorry, the clerk of Manatee County. Confusing? Yes. Yeah. So on, on the referendum, to <laughs> put it out there, it requires a majority of those people voting. Correct. You, not the, of the qualified electors? No, it, it, what we want to switch it from is the uh, number of lot owners not, back to uh, the qualified electors on record with Manatee County, the same as what we do with the changing the, the charter. I think I can make this a little bit easier. Yeah, it, please, it, it was confusing. So the charter is our highest form of governance mm -hmm. here at Trailer Estates. 
So generally, we have to always abide by the by the uh, charter. It's, it's our highest. Below, next below that is the deed restrictions. The problem is, is that uh, the charter is able to be changed by putting a ballot uh, or uh, a question on the election when we elect trustees in December uh, or in March, which is another story altogether. And then the people that are qualified to vote in that election, which means uh, owners and people that are not even uh, here in uh, trailer estates, they can vote from their homes if there's if there's snowbirds. And not within the state of Florida. Uh, correct. And then uh, then the ballot is then recorded. And if 700 people vote and 351 people vote yes, then it passes. To change a deed restriction currently, we have 1,479 lots. We have to send out a ballot to each one of those lots. And 735 have to vote affirmative to pass that to change the deed restriction. We've never ever had more than I believe 500, 400, 436 total votes. Yes. So that's why the deed restrictions are never getting changed or updated. And some of them are frankly antiquated. antiquated. Um, so there's, you're, you're moving the, the way that the deed restrictions are changed on, to fall under the charter. And uh, that's the easiest way. It's a very complicated thing, but it's the, it's the same method we use to change the uh, term lengths from two years to three, three years. years. We've already been through it. Mm -hmm. And then the voters from trailer estates voted affirmative on that. And that's, that's what we're looking for. This can still go down in, in defeat. I mean, it's not a done deal. You have to get a vote of the people in order to do it. Correct. And when on, on my PP38, there it says, uh, we feel, and the we is including our district council as well as Mr. Morris and myself mm -hmm. on beating this thing to death on how we can get this thing to work. It, the, big, the big takeaway is to keep in mind that the residents are still in control. Oh, yes. The residents are voting, would possibly vote this for, forward, but that doesn't mean the board's just going to change deed restrictions. Nope. Deed restrictions still have to be approved by the by the owners. <laughs> we're, not, we're not changing that. We're just changing how it's counted and how it's looked at. So the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So procedures. And who are the electors? Everybody on a deed? No, it's I, I believe it's one one vote one per vote per uh, lot. So per, there's more than one person on a deed. Only one person can vote on that lot. You can't. Everyone on the deed cannot vote. Mm, no, I, 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 I don't think that's right. That's that's right. That's that's right. right. Yeah. It, if you have Mister and Missus on the title, mm -hmm. they're entitled to a vote. But if you own more than one house. You're still. You're only right. entitled to. I'm sorry. Vote. You're right. Yeah. You're correct. Yeah. When you say okay. one lot, yeah. you're talking one parcel. So well, a household could get two votes. A household correct. could get two votes. Correct. But you're saying, but it's actually yeah. per parcel, not right. per lot. Correct. Correct. Because if you own, if you own a parcel um, that's made up of three lots, you don't get three votes. Right. And that's what I. That's where I was. I'm sorry. I, we, I, I know that you guys redefined parcel yes. versus mm -hmm. lot yeah. a while yeah. back, so I'm I'm using the old definition. Correct. Yeah. Parcel is the term. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's parcel. That's right. So just to be clear, so if you have, if your entire family is on the deed, you get, there's still one vote. No. Not everyone on the deed votes because how can that be any different from a husband wife who are on the deed? Understood it was the name that was on the deed. No, I'm name. sorry. You, you, could have, you, could have 12, you could have 12 names on the deed, but the registered voter is who's on the Manatee County uh, okay. uh, Board of Elections. Okay. No, the Manatee County Tax Code. Or help me, I just lost it. The uh, the uh, tax assessor. The tax. tax uh, yeah. Okay. And so those are the only people. So if you have a corporation, an LLC, it's not a name. So so it has one vote, I would think. But so the, so the LLC has a vote because we do have. I mean, we've, we've had all... that instant come up on the elections. Oh, 
So this this actually came up on the last election mm -hmm. and the board of canvassers of which the chairman uh, and uh, another young lady from the district yeah. mm -hmm. uh, was on there. And uh, who was the third? I can't remember. Me. So they the 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 LLC, an LLC voted and they voted in name. Uh, in other words, uh the uh, Johnson Trust or whatever. There, there was supposed to be a the, a name of the voter that was listed in the LLC, and it and, wasn't. And it wasn't. So there it was initially rejected by the uh, by the election uh, supervisor. Mm -hmm. And he changed that. So and then he, he changed name. that. I believe it was then finally accepted by the election accepted. supervisor. But I want to remind you, we do not, we do not handle these votes. We do not. This is all done by the supervisor of elections for Manatee County based on what is in our charter. And, and it's, it's their rules, you know, as yep. far as how, how it works. And it's not going to be any different than the way it was when we changed from two years to three years. Mm -hmm. So it still requires a majority vote of the qualified voters. Uh, uh, so, um, and, and and when I first came to Trailer Estates, the the two year to three year terms were on the ballot, along with having a minimum rental period of thirty one days, and I think an, uh, uh, something about um, how many how many uh, residents residents mm -hmm. single uh, family dwelling single family dwellings uh, one person can own. To stop some of the you know 14 15 properties that one person buys and you know turns us into a rental community so those are some of the things that we'll have to tackle in the future but uh this is the first step in order to being able to uh change some of those uh those deed restrictions so with the consent of the board i'd like to start this process and put this on the uh december's ballot the resolution we, has to come back to us for approval. Yeah, for well, the fact, board. Right. now I'm going to have to go back with just the council and, and sit down and try to develop the language, put it in Spanish and a whole bunch of other stuff. That then comes back <laughs> to the board, but it's going to take quite a while to develop all the language, the referendum, yeah. and then bring it back to the board to get the vote. Then and it the, goes back out. And so, the good news is, is that the vote technically is the or the election is already in place in December yes. and this is going to be a unique year because you're going to have a vote not only in December but then another one in March in March mm -hmm. to try to get everyone's terms aligned with the three year going from two year to three year wait I've managed to get just a little bit lost in this whole thing so are we talking about changing the charter? change how we change the deed restrictions yes yes mm -hmm. amend the charter amend the amend charter the, for amend how the we charter to change the, the process of how you amend the deed mm -hmm. restrictions mm -hmm. to not have a conflict mm -hmm. and <laughs> and i'm still not clear on who votes on it we've talked about a majority of qualified electors we've talked about a majority of the people who vote which is it uh talking about changing it to to a majority of who of qualified electors that vote in that election correct the same the same people that voted in the, the last election mm -hmm. and it will be bear with me here for a second it'll be all the individually named residents the only on persons the that are qualified to vote in said election shall be owners of record of real real property within said district, but they do not need to be actually residing in the district nor be residents of the state. The term owners of record means record owners appearing on the current rules of the property appraiser of Manatee County not less than 30 days prior to the date of the election. And the way well, I, I think it reads now is all lot owners. Mm -hmm. Partial. Partial owners. Partial. Yeah. And I'm just so the so just to be clear, the electors. I mean, our deed says 
Lewis Nichols, Bonnie Nichols, we both would get a vote. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. yes. On one property. Yes. One, one property. Yeah. And you yes. do not have to be a registered voter in Florida to do right. the vote. I understand that. Right. No, that's for the park only. Right. 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 For park oh, no. only. Yeah. Park residents only or park right. owners. Thank you. I'm going to make property sure. Property owners. Yes. Property owners. Property it does not include renters. Yes. I understand. Residents. Wow. Well, property owners. Property, property owners. owners. Right. Because uh, you may not be a resident. Your residence. Right. So, but, because you may not be a resident, but you own property. Right. It's owners. It's the owners. Yeah. By the way, and the reason why we're starting this process a little bit earlier than we did last time is that uh, the supervisor of elections, Bennett, retired somewhat abruptly. Uh, and uh, there may be, uh, we want to make sure that they know that we want to get this on uh, uh, onto the ballot. Um, and we're not sure of who's going to be, you know, in place, uh, if the governor or I don't know who even you appoints. Know, no, the go it's an appointment. So mm -hmm. the governor has the capability of appointing somebody that doesn't even know the first thing about the county elections when you already have a gentleman sitting there, Scott Harrington, I think his name is, yeah. uh, that's been there for 11 years. It, it, it's going to be very interesting to yes. see how that turns out, all it takes. Mm -hmm. Enough said. <laughs> Thanks for taking that research on because it was virtually impossible the way it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Thanks. So, do I have the consent to go ahead and push this thing through or yes. start the yes. process? Support? Yes. Support. Yes. Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. And I think the last item we have is the uh, TB operation update. Yep. And um, thank you. Um, did everyone receive a handout about Treasure Barn? Um, Only, yes, I did. You know, we uh, all listened to Barb's report for Standing Committee, but I, don't, not, I think this is kind of important for those of you that have not been down to Treasure Barn to see before it starts or have ever volunteered down there to know what it takes to contribute this much money. Um, their current balance, if I read it, if I heard it correctly, is thirty-seven thousand five hundred thirty-six. Um, if you understand that the average cost per item goes from a dollar to five dollars, a lot of sales. <laughs> it really boggles your mind about what these volunteers do. So I'm just, I'm just going to read this and for people in the audience to know something about what these true volunteers do. Treasure Barn is open 64 days a year, October through April on Thursday and Saturday, and May and through June on the first and third Saturdays of the month. On average, the volunteers work 3.5 hours per sale day. This equals 224 hours per volunteer. On sale day, volunteers arrive between 7 and 7.30 a.m., so while we're on bed sleeping, they're working. And they're out there in the cold and the hot. And sometimes during the rain. Tables are removed from the hall. All outside merchandise is set up on the tables. Clothing and shoe racks are wheeled out from the store. All furniture is taken out and displayed. Then during the sale, the furniture volunteers deliver merchandise and pick up furniture throughout the park. Donations are processed on sale day, so they keep, it keeps coming in. By 11, everything goes back to where it was. All furniture is picked up and put back into the furniture barn. All outside items are boxed up and placed in the hall with all the tables. The clothing racks are wheeled back in the store. Money is counted and the volunteers go home. So imagine doing this twice a week, twice a week twice a week. Tuesday's donation processing day from October to April, volunteers work on 31 Tuesdays, equaling 62 hours, two hours, two hours per day. Every item that comes through is looked at. It's checked and priced. All small appliances are checked to ensure they work. Clothing is spot cleaned if needed and placed on clothing racks. Store displays are updated to seasonal. 
Book donations are placed in the reading sections and jewelry is updated to enhance sales. The heart and soul of a treasure barn operation are the many volunteers who give their time, talent, and heart. During the peak of the season, there are 20 to 30 volunteers working on sale day. You don't see them, they're in the background, but they're there. And about 10 volunteers during the off season. Every day, one or two volunteers drive by the outside donation tables and check for donations. And if they're there, those items are put back on the cart in the store. So that's every day, every day, every day. When the store is closed from July through September, the work continues. Volunteers remove everything from the store shelves, they clean, and they repaint. Donations continue to be processed even during the summer. Displays are redone. This is all done in preparation for the opening October when all of this is repeated. So I felt very strongly about doing this because the Treasure Barn last year contributed $42,194 for the renovations toward the large hall. They're right now, they're sitting on $37,000. That's a lot of work. It's not glamorous, folks. It's hot, it's heavy, sometimes we get hurt. Um, it's amazing how much work they do. And this is not just a one and two event thing. This is year round work. Nobody's turned away from helping, not one. If you can't do the sale, they find you a job to do. So no one's ever turned away from the helping and all are welcome. One of the things that we don't talk about enough is the social benefit to our community. And I remember sitting here on this board when the fire department was going and many residents came to this board saying, we cannot lose this. It means so much. But I think sometimes we forget it's there because it's, it's, it's always there. It's always there, but they do a tremendous service to those individuals who don't get out much. It's their lifeline. They get the news of the day, they hear the gossip, they do everything there. So I just wanted to say from the board, thank you. It is appreciated and it's worth our time. So Very thank much you. so. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. One of the one things I want to follow up with is that forty some thousand dollars is saving your assessments from going True. up. Right. So whatever you donate helps offset yeah. that cost. Very much appreciated. Yes. A question for, for Kathy along the same lines. As the Treasure Barn people, and maybe for Barb, have they looked at any way that they could facilitate their sales, like some while getting additional storage, putting a building out in, in front of the garage or something like that that could save them time and set up and would help in inclement weather, that type of thing that would move stuff out? Have they looked at anything that, that they could do for that? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Do you want to? Uh, uh, um, no. And that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. We can we can certainly explore that yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that planning, um, property management planning company could probably also review yeah, a lot of that. Include something like that. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but. I, I think I'd like to keep that internal, but mm -hmm. that's just an additional cost. But it's a good idea, though. It really is. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Let's go ahead and jump right into the uh, trust review reports. Uh, Rod, you want to start us off? Sure. Uh, we've been writing around, of course, checking things. Uh, we've been writing this last week. We I wrote several violations. Uh, the thing we're running into is... Uh, people needing to power wash or paint their trailers. That's the big issue. A reminder though, the next issue coming up, since the weather's getting warmer, the grass is gonna start growing again and the weeds are gonna start growing again. So you need to be able to take care of those and get those. If we get a little bit of rain with the temperatures we're getting, the weeds are just gonna grow like crazy. Um, 
And we've had uh, good good work going around the park. We've talked to a lot of people, or Lee and I have, and and uh, it's it's been a good uh, good time to to take care of things. That's it. Great, Russell. The uh, violation summaries is listed in the agenda. So if anybody prefer to look on the website and find it out, um, you can look it up and see what the violations that Rod's talking about writing up and things. It is important that uh, if you have any questions or anything, call the office or even go online and look at the website and see what we've been talking about as far as the deed restrictions and things that the park recommends uh, through the deed restriction that you maintain your trailer and your property, your parcel. Um, it also will, is very beneficial for the golf cart rules, which uh, that's from the state that we comply with those rules. Um, the size of the letters that are on your houses, that's also from the from the county that we do that, and from any other rules or regulations that the county requires that our park uh, follows and takes care of. So the website's up and running and it's beautiful. It has over 30 or 40,000, I believe, if I'm correct on that number of views. It's had, an, it's had more views on it now than I think it's ever had in its entire life. So it's very nice to have that uh, available for you to go in and look at it. You don't have to call anybody, see an issue. You can go find out if that's something that that is worthy of a complaint. We are getting a lot of complaints that some of them don't have anything to do with what the park can take care of. Everybody has a, has a different opinion on that, but you can go online and look at that. And that'll, as good as it is now, it'll tell you what the problems are. Uh, I do want to ask that everybody that's leaving, uh, been here on in Club Med on their vacation, when you go home, if you would uh, make sure that things outside are tucked away so they're not going to uh, affect anybody that's here staying during the hurricanes or as we leave for the hurricanes, we come back and find out that some of your objects from next door are in your, inside your house due to the hurricane blowing them through your windows. So please, everybody, pay attention to that before they leave. It's very uh, annoying to see chairs flying down the street. Thank you. Great. Cindy? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. I like the, flare, the chair flying down the street thing. That's not a good thing. Um, bear with me here. Um, the health fair went really good, I hear. I, I masked up and came in for the first part of it. And I got to really thank Randy was really hustling and Bill um, and Lee uh, Dottie. Thanks for being a team player there and giving me some uh, coffee and uh, Debbie Best and Kathy Haney. And um, you guys all made coffee and made it nice. I hear everything went pretty well. Uh, it was well attended. Uh, the only thing I had was the comment was we didn't have any hearing aids. And I definitely think we need those. And uh, Todd was there too. Thank you. And I'm sure the rest of you guys came through later. Mm -hmm. um, I have a blood drive coming up uh, March 21st. And I got a little challenge for that Michigan lady sitting there. Uh, high State Michigan fans always like do a blood drive for the High State Michigan game. So since we only had maybe 60 people show up for the last blood drive, I think a high State's going to have to, uh, uh, you know, say we can have more blood than the Michigan fans have and I'll figure out what the winner gets and not that we would lose but if I'd lose if somebody yeah. came up with a Michigan shirt I'd wear it at a board meeting but well I know that's what that's it uh the young lady sitting up there will have to wear an high state shirt that's it so uh that's March 21st 8 to, eight to next 12. Year. Yeah. uh <laughs> that's you uh secretary lady it does so well uh, AED uh, training, uh, pardon me. No, go ahead. Uh, AED training, which is those devices that could save a life. They're in every building for when we used to be a fire district and Debbie Best, one of the nurses uh, and a number of other people have told me that we really should have training for those. Uh, since we do have them available, why not? So uh, uh, Cedar Hammock Fire District, has came up with the date is March 27th. We're gonna have it from one to two. I'll be putting some more information out on that. Um, the other thing I just wanna say as a new board member, man, I 
I so appreciate all these volunteer board members with all their experience and knowledge because you guys blow me away. You remind me of my postal days when I memorized the whole domestic mail manual. So you guys are awesome. And I get a lot of feedback from people I talk to saying they appreciate you and uh, they see all the improvements happening. And, uh, and I know I'm involved in there, but you guys are doing a great job. So uh, that's all I got to say, if I'm allowed to say that, Dwayne. <laughs> Well, it's too late to stop you now. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I do that. <laughs> but I didn't start coughing on you, so that's good. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Anything else? Great. Dottie? Yes. Good morning. Uh, a couple of things here. We had a coffee break held on uh, February 17th. Our next one is March 16th. And the last one will be April 20th for this season. Our potluck was held on February 20th. The next one is March 19th. And the last one for this season will be held on April 16th. It's hard to believe we're already into that part of the year. The bingo report for February, there was $6,540 total and payout was $6,540. And there were 675 attendees and players. That's amazing. They do yes. a, this uh, bingo going. And that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Kathy? Oh, good morning, everybody. Big crowd. We're not, we're not quite used to this. Um, since the last board meeting, we've had a few events. So here's the rundown. On February 22nd, we had our final dessert and a show. We had our own entertainment with the fun singers, the jammers, and the Jersey Girls karaoke. We had about 144 in attendance, which is a really good crowd. And I want to thank the following people, Arlene, Terry, Lynn, Mary Lou, and Bill back there for doing the sound that night because I was afraid to do it. Um, it was a fun night. So thank you all. On February 23rd, we had comedian Mark Klein. Um, his contract cost was $1,500. And I'm really happy to report that the door that night brought in $1,205. We had 241 people in attendance. And Beautification Club worked the doors. So it's a good night. Then on February 24th, we had a Saturday night dance, Music Box Duo entertained. The contract cost was $400. The door was 316 We had 42 guests. And we did 50-50 that night, and we brought in a whopping $133. So we did really well. Yacht Club helped out the doors. And last Saturday, we had our Rye Road Band here. Their contract cost was $950. The door was $527 with 70 guests. And the 50-50 was $194. We did really well that night, and the Canadian group helped um, we had to increase more tables. People just kept coming. So it was a really good night. So thank you all for coming. Looking ahead, we have several things. We only have six events left. Woohoo! For seasonal records. And I'm counting or anything, but I am. This Thursday, we have two events. On this Thursday, March 7th, the John Rennell Quartet will be here. And if you don't know who he is, if you went to the big band night last year, he was their vocalist. So if you know best, so he is coming back with his quartet. Uh, show starts at seven, doors open at six. It's five dollars per person. And this is going to be open to the public. I invited a lot of our dance people who who like to dance that music to come. So hopefully they will also be coming. The dance floor will be open that night. So if you like traditional Frank Sinatra-ish music. This is your concert. It's only a 90-minute show, but it should be a good one. On Saturday, March 9th, we have our final Saturday night show time. And we have the Byrne Brothers Irish Show. They're from Donegal, Ireland. This is be kind of an up-tempo Irish show. Um, 7 o'clock start time. Doors open at 6. $5 per person. And then moving on to March. On Tuesday, March 12th, we have a gospel music show featuring... The Trailer Estates Trio. 
starts at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6. And, and they'll be taking donations at the door. Um, on Saturday, March 16th, we have our St. Pat's party with the Paisley Craze Band. So we're doing a little bit of 60s with, with a little bit of Irish. <laughs> we'll figure it out. So uh, wear your green that night. The dance is from 6 to 9. And it's free to all residents. And our last big event for this March is the Big E. It's on Thursday, March 21st, is the Happy Hour Beach Party Dance. We have made some changes to this year's event. We're going to be selling food tickets. So last year, we had people brought food. This year, you're going to buy food if you want a meal. We're going to be cooking out burgers and bratwurst. Um, the meal is $5, and, you, and it's, you'll get uh, protein, a uh, bag of chips, and baked beans, or you can bring your own food. I'll be at, at the post office selling tickets next week, Wednesday through Friday. It's five bucks a person for your meal. Or you can bring your own food if you wish. That's up to you. And also, we're going to have a shuttle service from the parking lot behind the large hall to the beach area. We've rented a six-passenger golf cart. Um, and so we will be shuttling people down. If you don't wish to park down by the beach, You can we can pick you up at that parking lot and then bring you down. So. So this is something very new. Uh, the flyers are already up. So please uh, plan on it. Last year was a big event. So I hope it'll be bigger this year. Next year's calendar for season will be in the April Tribune. It is completely planned. Contracts are in. So there'll be about 14 events during the season. We had 28 this season. So it's a, it's a drastic change. And I thank everybody who has come who has weathered the changes in the dance times and has come anyway, and those that have helped. I have all my volunteers for the rest of the events. So thank you all for all your help. That's it. Great. Thank you very much. Todd? All right. I uh, just got two things to talk about today. Uh, the pool lifts are in. Um, I haven't gone down there and used one yet. So, <laughs> But uh, th those are both in, and I haven't seen anybody use any yet. Um, it'll probably be a little easier once the uh, lift into the pool is is put up. Um, there's still a couple weeks out. They're waiting on parts for that, and then they've got to get the gate and then the fob access done. So hopefully within a month that'll be up and functional and, and uh, make make access ADA access to the pool a lot easier. Um, then the dock repairs uh, still have the one dock. It's been tore up since the the storm. Um, I'm struggling to get them over here to do it. Uh, they keep telling me two weeks, two weeks. They're supposed to be here today, but again, they haven't shown up that I've seen yet. So hopefully any day they'll be here and, and get that dock repair and then the, the one post done. That's all I got right now. Uh, just one of the concerns, do we have something that's going to train people on how to use those lifts to get into the pool? I, I haven't mm -hmm. seen anything yet. Um you know, they're real, I can help them with them if they need it, but it's really just a, a hand tool up and down, in and out. Okay. The lift going into the pool is, is nothing more than a push a button up, push a button down. I think there's a sign on the, the uh, there's a sign, a small sign on the pool lift that goes into the pool <laughs> on how to operate it. That okay. is that correct, Bill? There's a sign that says, you know. Yeah, it, it's just a handhold. Okay. It's got up and down and over and left and right. And I mean, it's really like to help somebody. If somebody, if somebody needs some assistance and they can call me and I will gladly run them through it. Um, and you know, the other question I had is uh B and B fence, are we going to get the rail in uh, the damaged uh, the, rail? The powder coaters are extremely backed up. It's setting at powder coating. It's been there for over a month. Um, we got on them about it earlier or later last week. And their their hands are tied by the power code. Okay. It's fixed. It's repaired. It's just setting up powder coating. Uh, did I see that the TVs are starting to be put in for the uh, 32? The, the TVs are here. They haven't been installed yet. Um, we got to get Wi-Fi drops done and all that stuff first too. So that's happening, but it's I don't have a good date on it, so that's why I didn't want to talk about it. Are they hardwired in that connection or Wi-Fi? They'll be hardwired in. Okay, thank you. Lewis? 
Uh, good morning. So we've sent out the uh, letters offering the prepayment of the special assessment, and they're starting to come back in. Also been uh, spending some time fielding questions, uh, telephone messages and emails, people asking questions about them. And uh, uh, some of them, there's a, properties are changing hands, and some of the people try to trying to contact the people that have had a closing since we sent the letter out mm -hmm. or since we printed the addresses so everybody gets a chance. We're doing the best we can to reach those people. Um, working on the draft of the budget, and we're we're uh, kind of waiting to see how many prepayments we get or a little, little closer to that total to see how it affects the income statement. But um, we're plowing through the first draft of the budget. Great, for me. thank you. You're last. <laughs> no, you're last. You got the handle. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. On PP 21A storage lot rates, I fixed the with tax figure for 20 foot annual storage lot rate from 302.47 to 303.47. And then also on PP 43 bulletin board guidelines, office slash small hall breezeway, item one, I replaced the beautification committee with ARC. Um, and that's just referencing the board that's to the right of the arc door. Um, and then I'm current with reservations. Uh, please check the website calendar right away to ensure there's no errors made on location, time, grill, fobs, et cetera. And then check it again the week prior to make sure there's been no changes made. Um, I do not have reservation forms for the following groups. Beautification Club, CERT Computer Club, U Euchre, Jammers, Joker Rummy, Ladies Bible Study on Thursday, Literary Ladies, Masonic Square Club, Pinochle, Rummy Cube, Wee Bowling, uh, Woodshop Basic Turning, and Woodshop paint, Painting Toys. I need to get the reservations for May 1st, 2024 through April 30th, 2025, recurring reservations. Remember, you'll need to submit a copy of your bylaws and a list of officers or for less formal groups, a PP39 club group, purpose and contact information for your group. I have to have these before I can process the recurring room reservations. I'm on track with the usual one, re one week turnaround. Pickleball was excluded from this list that I read as I will be meeting with Phyllis in late March. Great. That's everything I've got. Thank you. And Kathy, I personally want to thank you for all your hard work and everything that you've done so far, especially the organization of all the activities that you've had. Thank you. uh, much appreciated. And what I'd like to do is ask everybody that would like to have some type of a different summer activity is please get in touch with myself or Dottie Deerwester. Uh, my telephone number's in the Tribune everywhere else. I, but uh, give me a call or send me an email as well as Dottie. Uh, I'd like to see some more summer activities done this year. Okay, um, that's my report. Mr. Morris, would you give your um, park manager's comments? Certainly. To piggyback on to Trustee uh, um, Nichols, uh, our treasurer, we are we are working on the budget together. We are waiting uh, for the uh, some of the special assessment numbers to come in and get updated. <laughs> Want to remind everybody the deadline for paying off the special assessment is March 31st uh, of this of this year. And that'll be the final opportunity to uh, make a uh, payment in full so that you don't have it showing up on your uh, on your tax bill every year. Uh, we are uh, doing our best to stay. Well, we, we are within the 5% increase uh, voted on a couple of budgets ago. Uh, there will be no uh, change to that. Uh, and uh, uh, that's for our budget. We plan to present the proposed operating budget uh, at the next uh, workshop. And uh, moving on from that, smoke detectors, round two. Saturday, April 20th uh, is the date that the uh, Red Cross is given to us. Uh, Signups will begin on March 15th uh, at the office. Uh, you need to be present that day. Uh, generally, they start at 9 a.m for installations and they can go up to and around 2 p.m. depending on how many people uh, would like to have uh, smoke detectors. And what that is, the program is, is that uh, the Red Cross provides free smoke detectors for your uh, for your mobile home. 
uh, and uh, we'll install them and then educate you on putting batteries in them and everything else. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, I don't need to tell you that, especially in mobile homes, mm -hmm. time is of the essence if there's a fire of getting out. Uh, and early detection for smoke is a, is a big deal. So if you'd like to, uh, and the price is right. So uh, sign up again starting March 15th at the office, and the date is Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. start. I uh, wanted to tell everybody that our FOB system is nearing its final uh, completion. And uh, we've decided uh, to, uh, as we have talked about before, we are going to switch over to a combination ID card and FOB. And that'll be starting May 1st when you can start to get it. So we're going to be asking for you to bring back your FOB and you'll get issued one of these. And this will also work to get into bingo and all the events and everything else. Uh, and it will have a, the Trailer Estates logo on it and everything else. So you only have to carry one thing around oh, wow. uh, from now on uh, in, your, uh, in your wallet or around your neck or whatever. And... Uh, when did that? When was that going to start? May first will be the uh, will be the first time the changeover will start. Thank you. And uh, that will mean too that the old fobs will stop working very quickly after that. So if you're here, you're going to need to get your fob updated. Please, is that a, a photo ID? It, uh, we are planning on it to be a photo ID. Yes. Wow. The uh, high tech. Yeah, very <laughs> high tech. <laughs> 20th century. And that is all I had uh, for... Uh, I have a question about that. So what about guest cards and all of that? How will that work? So we're going to still issue most likely a guest card because we're not going to... Uh, these are not cheap and we're not going to issue that uh, card, but we will probably issue guest cards uh, short term. How, how are we going to handle um, in in instances where let's just say my husband and I both need ID cards but we only we share one fob we we've talked about that uh we have we have all of April to figure this out okay <laughs> <laughs> plenty of time I like that idea. and I always can rely on the secretary <laughs> to throw a monkey wrench in our hands I like that uh, we're but, gonna, we're gonna yes, get... we'll have to figure that out, and maybe we put both of your pictures on there. I don't know if that's a possibility, but we'll, except for Louis, when there's 13 people on the deed, that <laughs> might be more of a challenge. <laughs> so we're actually going to have a bug shot. <laughs> we're, that is the direction we're working in, but there may be some logistic issues with people that are up north and everything else. Mm -hmm. That may not be what we want to do, so... We're we're talking with Big Fish about it, but the game plan initially was to have a uh, an ID card with a picture on it, so that when people come to Bingo, we know that the person using the card is not using a card from 21 years ago, and that person is long well gone. Russell, wow. question with that on Bingo: How are we going to tell that it's a currently activated ID card? I'm glad you asked that question. Because we're able to have readers now, uh, we can issue a, a reader uh, to the event, oh. and you can actually scan the card and wow, see if it's still in in effect. Oof. High tech. High tech. Nice. If we want to go that gracious. far, I'm not so sure that's really required with a picture and everything else. But Kathy will be walking around with her little. <laughs> I'm going to get a on my waist, you know. We're also going to issue one of those change machines that she wears on her belt. Yeah. 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 50 cents. <laughs> okay, anything else? <laughs> yes, no. Thank Mr. Morris, anything else? Okay, uh, and I did skip right over the violation report. Who wants to dive into that? Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris. <laughs> I apologize. I thought we covered it with uh, Trustee McAllister, but there is there is a larger number of uh, violations this uh, period because of the power washing. Um, we're, we're looking into 
uh, the logistics of buying a power washer or two, an inexpensive one, and, and loaning or renting it out for people to use to take care of their home. I know it's not something that we want to do, but it's it may be something, because we're seeing a lot of people that uh, need to power wash their home. And don't have the ability to mm -hmm. buy one. Uh, we do loan out tools um, through our maintenance department, right. whether it be a shower. Power. Right. This, these right. are, as far as, that. yeah, as power. far as I'm concerned, these are, you know, $79 power washers and they're not, they're not super expensive. It's worked at other uh, mobile home parks uh, for this reason. And uh, it takes away the excuses that, you know, we couldn't find someone to do it and we don't have one and therefore we can't do it. So even if they can find someone. But again, we're looking into it. It's early. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have any unfinished business? Hearing none, I'll adjourn the meeting at uh, 1050. Is that right? Me. Where are you going? Five minutes. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Five minutes? Okay, whatever you like to take a five minute break. <laughs> Russell Woods. <laughs> With that, we'll take a five minute break. Please uh, silence your microphones.
We start off hot and all of a sudden our park manager wants it freezing cold and yes. Yeah, it's, now he's going to turn it over for five at least, at least in the least defense, it was me. I was, was waiting me. for snow to come out of there. <laughs> okay. Let me call to order the uh I just lost it. Uh I got the wrong page. Let me call the uh, to order the regular board meeting for March. 5th, 2024, here in Marks Hall at 11.01. And before we get started, uh, Mr. Morris would like to make one more uh, announcement from the workshop that is very important. I apologize, a resident had reminded me. We have a free shredding event, shredding for bills, old checks, and everything else, coming up on Ma Saturday, March 23rd uh, at 9 a.m., you're allowed to bring a couple, three or four, you know, boxes to shred, and they have a certified shredder where they put it into this truck and it shreds everything. So if you have um, uh, old tax returns, old checks, old bills, anything, and you want to get rid of some of this stuff, uh, it's a good time to do it. So March 23rd, he'll be backed up somewhere in the uh, this area by the uh, Circle Drive, and he'll be here, I believe, for two hours. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Okay, may we have the roll call again, please? Sure. Lori Dalton here. Dottie Deerwester. Present on Zoom. Uh, Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Present. Russell McAllister. Present. Louis Nichols. Present. Cindy O'Brien. Present on Zoom. Rod Smith. Present. Dwayne Trotter. Present. Lee Morris. Present. Okay, I'd like to have uh, public comments. And the crowd will side. <laughs> Do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? Come right on to the mic and state your name and address. And <clears throat> okay, it's Mac Buckenberger, eighteen oh six Wisconsin Avenue. Uh, my son comes down here, and let's say her family comes down here at the end of June. Normally, would use. This fob, from what I understand, they're going to be unavailable at that point in time or taken off. What does he do or what does the family do to be able to use the pool and that type of thing? Is there a temporary fob you have to get or can we renew ours or what can we do? So we're we're going to look in. We're, well, we're here before we do that. Uh, board, can I have this as an interactive? Yes. 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 Yeah. And I'll get the approval there, please. So we're looking into guest passes that would have a FOB associated with them. So then we would issue that, and it would have a FOB attached to it, correct? Okay. Cost so involved? No. not for. We don't charge anything for guest passes. Okay. That... Help me out for just a second. Your last name is Buckenberger? Yes. Okay. And I'm sorry, your address again? 1806 Wisconsin Avenue. Okay. Thank you. So just for your reference, this this was uh, accelerated. We weren't going to do this for a few months. Correct. And this was accelerated, so we don't have all our T's crossed or I's dotted, so we're working on it. And that's why we're not going into effect until May 1st. But we're, we're working on, and we're pretty sure that was going to be the easiest way to do it, was to be able to issue a, a, a guest fob. Well, and they're issuable up to, I believe, 30 days. Okay, that was that was the question. Thank you. Anybody else like to make a public comment? Anybody on Zoom? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'm close public comment, and we'll jump right into the approval of the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the February 20th, 2024 uh, board meeting workshop? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Yes. Yep. Yeah. You want me to get them, Todd? <laughs> Todd, Todd? Todd caught it. Nobody emailed me. I was all ready to say as, as written. Um, in the heading, there's no date. It just date. says date, D-A-T-E, instead of February 20th, 2024. 
So that needs to be corrected. Good catch, Todd. Thank you. Any other corrections? All those in favor of approving the motion is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the motion minutes is as corrected. Minutes is corrected. Please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. The minutes are approved. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the February 20th regular board meeting? I'm Don't sorry, move. February 20th, 2024 board meeting. And I'll second it. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Yep. Same one. Same, Same thing. One. The date, the ATE at the top needs to be February 20th, 2024. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, please say nay. The minutes are approved. Uh, could we have the report of the treasurer? Yes, sir. Current balance in the region's <laughs> account is $52,634.46. The region's money market account is $2,000. $123,553.29. Within that fund is the uh, balance of the seawall loan, $176,129.53. The proceeds from the Trailer Estates Fire Control District, $271,350.20. Special Assessment Fund, $26,358.77. And then the balance is our uh, operating and reserve fund, $1,649,714.79. Okay, is there a second for... Uh, no, you need a motion. I'm sorry, need, is there a motion to approve the treasurer? Report? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the treasury report is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Aye. What was that? She was an aye. She was an aye. Oh, an aye. Okay. Um, da, 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 they just threw me. <clears throat> Invoices. Well, the motion is passed. Okay. Uh, do we have any bills? No, sir. None. I like that. Mm. Okay, jumping into the agenda items. Uh, I've got to get myself. First item we had was the uh, public, uh, I'm sorry, update the PP18, the public records policy. And uh, I make a motion to update PP18 with the updated public record policy. I'll second it. Do, Do we, I need to really amend, to amend, amend my motion to say, let, I'm going to amend it. Um, I'd like to amend my motion to update PP18 with the updated public records policy as discussed okay. in today's okay. workshop. I'll second that. No, you can, no I, it'd be it's cleaner if I do it. Got yeah. I'll second it. I just got to get it scribbled down. Okay, yep. Okay. All those in favor of approving the motion as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Uh, the second item we had was update PP19, the office fees and let me get to that one. and i make a motion to update pp19 with the attached office fee policy second todd do i need to amend that one also no, no there was no there wasn't any changes good Okay, uh, all those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. say nay. The motion is passed. Okay, do we have any final trustee comments? Hearing none, I don't think we have any unfinished, unfinished business. And with that, I'll adjourn the meeting at 11-11.
Is that a record? Thank you very much for attending the meeting. That was very.